the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they would have called him Zachariah after his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a writing ta tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed. And he spoke, Blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid, up, laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's our uh, normal experience in our life when we expect a special day to arrive. It may be a day when we celebrate our birthday, or an engaged couple waiting for the day of wedding, um, a person who has finished his job and uh, attended his uh, or her interview waiting for the day of the appointment, uh, so, so on so on, and so forth. We wait for any particular special occasion the day. The people of Israel, after the promise of God for the sending of the Messiah, the Savior, waited not only for the Messiah and the Savior, but also the day that he would arrive. So they kept this particular concept of the day of the Lord very special to their expectation. And they had their own dreams. As they had their own dreams for uh, how the Messiah would come, they also had a dream how this day of the Lord will be. And by and large, they had a dream of the day of the Lord when they will be successful. They, the, 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 the Messiah would arrive like a king and he will defeat the neighboring countries and the Israel will become a powerful nation. And they, that will be the day of the Lord. They were dreaming as such. But when the prophets spoke, taking this concept of the day of the Lord, spoke to the people, interpreting what is happening in their life and interpreting the word of God, they had a different connotation to the day of the Lord. Today, in the, in the first reading from the prophet Malachi, he invites or he, he, he's, he talks of the day of the Lord as a day when uh, there will be a religious purification. The temple of the Lord be cleansed and the Levites, the priest clan would do their duties in the temple properly because the, the Lord is going to arrive. So an expectation of the day of the Lord when the temple, the religious purification will take place. A religious purification is not mere a ritual activity. A religious purification would intend for our right relationship with God. Taking the same concept of the day of the Lord, Prophet Amos speaks of a purification in form of social justice. He looks into the social injustice taking place in uh, interpersonal relationship, in the market and business world, and in the families and uh, in the society. The social injustice that is taking place, where he um, enumerates number of social injustice in their life, where the poor are trampled upon, the orphans are sold, where there is a... Um, 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 cheating in the business and in the marketplace. And Amos takes this concept of the day of the Lord and says, you expect the day of the Lord to be successful on your side. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be a day of judgment. And he expects a social revival, an establishment of social justice, where he says, let justice roll down like water and peace like an ever-flowing stream. A day of the Lord for a pro social prophet like Amos would be a social purification. 
So on the one hand, a Prophet Malachi calls for a, a, a religious purification, the right relationship with God. And the social prophet Amos invites the people for, to expectation of the day of the Lord where there is social purification and social justice is established in interpersonal relationship, in the family, in the society, and at large in the world. Prophet Mika expects or rather interprets the word of God. With what shall I come before the Lord? Shall I come before the Lord with the, the, the burnt offering and offerings of thousands of bulls and rams? With what offering shall I come before the Lord? How can I worthily come before the Lord? Then the word of God is expressed through prophet Mika. He says, O oh man, I have told you how to come before me. Love good, do justice and walk humbly before the Lord. Love good and do justice and walk humbly before the Lord. So there is a, an expectation of the Lord that where the combination of social justice and religious purity be combined in our everyday walk of life. Where we love the Lord and express the love of the Lord in loving one another by our respectful words, by our respectful and honorable actions towards others in our interpersonal relationship in the families, in our society, and in the world at large. And when we lack this right relationship with God and right relationship with one another, then the day of the Lord is not going to be successful. It's going to be a day of judgment. The Eucharist that we are celebrating has got two tables, two altars. The altar that is celebrated here in the church and the altar of life when that we continue to celebrate the Eucharist. What we celebrated sacramentally here is celebrated in our life. The same sacrifice, the same love that is celebrated here in the altar of the Lord, on the altar of the Lord has to be celebrated on the altar of life. When that is lacking, when the altar, you know, on the altar of the Lord, if our right relationship with one another is lacking, then what we celebrate here on the altar of the Lord is only a ritual practice. We are all waiting to celebrate the great festival of the Christmas. We are waiting for this day. Just tomorrow evening, we will begin the great celebration of Christmas. With which attitude, let us ask ourselves, we are going to approach this feast of Christmas. Is it going to be just a mere living or celebrating ritually the, the, the feast? Or are we going to set right our relationship with God and set right our relationship with one another? Only when we have a concordance of these two relationships set right can we meaningfully celebrate the Christmas, the arrival of the Lord. So let us celebrate this Christmas in a more meaningful manner, setting right our relationship with God and with one another in our thoughts, in our words and in our actions.